Hello everybody, welcome back to my RC Plane channel. I'm James, continuing on with this Balsa USA smoothie build and sort of taking um, off from my last video where I was doing the installation of the throttle servo and the linkage going to the carburetor. I'm continuing on with my control rod installation. And in this video, my goal is to get to the rudder, the elevator and the ailerons. So before I start, again, I wanna go over a few things, kind of carrying on from the discussion that I've been having. I'll show you this again real quick. This is just the fact that the tail section of the, of the smoothie is sort of blunt, it's sort of squared off, and we have to cut a notch to accommodate the clevis for the rudder. And that'll be done here shortly. And then what else? So I'm gonna be using, again, I'm gonna be using this, this is a golden rod setup for the control rods by Sullivan. This is number 506, the blue and gold. These ones are 48 inches long. They're probably too long, I need to cut them. Well, I know they're too long, so I need to cut them. And it's the hardware I'm gonna be using for the, for the control rods. And then I'm also gonna be using these Debro Easy Link. These are these little kind of connectors. I have one in here somewhere. Where'd they go, there's one. This little connection it's kind of very convenient I like these a lot these just hook on to the metal control rod and I'll be showing you that in a little bit and of course I have a bunch of hardware from the kit I'm going to be using the control horns from the from the kit itself and then I have a few other things in here I have some some clevises that came with the golden rod kit that I'll be using so yeah so we'll get going on this and then what else so I got my radio um, the battery set up and I have the radio I'm going to be using the Futaba, I've mentioned this before, the Futaba 6J. And I did have a question about um, showing the, um, how I set the, the endpoint adjustments for the servo. And I'll try to get to that. I probably won't do it in this video. And I wasn't really thinking about doing a lot on my particular settings for this because, as I mentioned before, this, I don't think that this Futaba, this particular model is being made anymore. It's getting to be a little bit on the older side. It's probably five or six years old. And of course, there's many different types of radios out there. So I didn't think I would want to show like all of my little settings for this particular radio because it probably wouldn't be of great interest. But I'll see if I can get to that endpoint one in a video and maybe show a few other features. But that'll that'll be later. So let's go ahead and we turn this on here. And there are my, hopefully you can kind of see my servos down there I have. And I like to mark them. At least when I'm kind of setting things up, I have it marked R and E for the rudder and the elevator. A little piece of tape on there. Helps me keep things sort of lined up and oriented. So here they go. Here's my elevator. And here's my rudder. All right, so those guys are ready to go. And they're centered. And I'm going to leave them on as I, as I do this so that you know, obviously I don't want to kind of move my servo by accident and then set up my control rod. I just, it'll just make it a little bit um, easier to kind of keep them on um, and at least check them as I'm going, make sure they're centered as I, as I do this. Okay, so the first step that I'm going to do is, and now again, you know, this is, you know, model building, building kits. There are different ways of doing all this stuff. So I'm just gonna kind of walk through this the way I, I'm thinking about doing it and there's other ways to do this type of thing. So always keep that in mind. So what I'm gonna do is I like to do is I like to try to, I need to locate the location of the control horns. And what I need to do first though is take them off the little, they have like these little sprues that they, they're connected to. So let me go ahead and pull these little parts off of here. I'm just gonna cut them off of here using my cutters. Get these all off of here. So these come with the control, the control horn, and then they have like this little back plate, this little guy right here that this, that's you screw into, and that's basically how it sticks onto or holds onto the control surface. So I have the control horns, and I have the little plates. Let me pull these off of here, and I'll go ahead and I'll clean these up. I got to cut the little the little spurs off of these, whatever you want to call them, kind of clean them up. Okay, so I'll do that real quick. Okay, so here's my cleaned up control horns. And then I said, like I mentioned, this is like the little back plate, these little square guys. And what happens is you just have, they come with these little screws and you just kind of put them through. We'll have to drill out the holes in the, in the control surfaces. We'll have to drill out the holes, go through the, through the control surface. 
and then these are going to screw into the little plate and draw it up against the control surface and snug it down. Then I'll probably cut the cut the end of the of the little screw or the little bolt off here. So that's how those work. If you haven't, if you're not familiar with those. Okay, so for the servo end, I'm going to be using the Easy Links, like I mentioned before. If I can grab one out of here, here's my little Easy Link connector. It's going to go on like this. Oops, snap on, and that's going to attach onto the onto the servo arm, and then these are going to screw into the inner or the control rod itself. And I've already screwed this one on. And this one's going to do the same thing, and we're going to screw it in here. It's kind of a hard to do that because it gets kind of tight, and you have to hold it and kind of twist it and everything. But the but what I want to do is if I can show this, if you can see down inside here, you can kind of see those those control rods. The outer control rods are in there. In fact, let me flip this over here without making everything a mess. So those are my outer control rods. Those blue guys right there, basically the sheath whatever they want to call them and what I want to do is I want to when I attach or when I set this up boy, I'm kind of running out of room I cut these I made these long so that the connection where they go into the control where they go into the control rod itself so that this connection or this joint will be inside of that tubing in fact let me see here I have some spare tubing here let me put this on real quick So what I wanted to do is I want to set it up so that you can see this. I wanted to set it up so it's inside here. And then the outer tubing will sort of support that joint, if you will. And it's not that big of a deal, but if it's hanging out like this, in fact, even the instructions say you don't, you don't want it really far out. You know, you don't want something like that. There'd be too much flexibility in it. So you want to kind of keep it close. But I just cut these long enough so they're kind of inside, sort of inside that sheath like that, that outer tubing. And that'll help kind of support that joint. So that's what I did there. So let me pull this apart. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and screw on this other one real quick here. And like I said, it gets kind of tight, but these just kind of screw in here. All right, so this one's on, and I'll just pull this off because I don't need it on right now. And now I have two of these guys. Now again, I don't know what model number would be. Like I said, these are these are 48, so I'm going to be cutting off a pretty big piece of these, and um, probably could have gone with a 36 inch length kit, but I don't know what actually model that number is, and I couldn't find one. So I just I have this 48, and I'm going to have to cut it. So anyhow, so these are all set up now. Let me go ahead and flip this over. Okay, and hopefully you can kind of see those guys in there. I'm gonna move things around in a bit. I'll move my camera in just a bit here, but so I'm gonna go ahead and feed this through, and it should come out back here. Well, oh, it's gonna be really long. Let me do this other one also here. Okay, there's that. I'm going to move this over here a little bit. And now, just because I want to be able to work on it, I'm going to go ahead and clip these off, kind of on the long side. That oops, should be there. Okay. All right, and there's the connect. Just connected this one real quick, and this one also just to, if I can get it in there on the camera. Whoops, losing it. Kind of a hard angle. There it goes. So those guys are in there like that now. There we go. All right, so now I want to locate the 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 control horn in the, in 
on the elevator. I'm going to start with the elevator first. Now the thing about the control horns, if you look at it here, I can show you. You want to line up the holes with the center line of the hinge line. Or, or I should say you want to line up the holes with the hinge line. So you want to put it on, for example, the elevator somewhere, like you'd put it somewhere like that. I don't know if I can hold it in place or not. Let's see here. Sort of like right here. Hopefully you can kind of see that. But so those hinges, so the hinge line is lined up with the holes. That's kind of like the ideal location. And then it's going to be probably I'm going to put a little bit of a angle in it so that it matches the 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 movement of the actual control rod itself. But this control rod is a little bit over too, a little bit too far. So I'm probably just going to kind of move it over. I'm just going to kind of put a little bit of a bend in it like that, and that should be okay. And then I'm going to have to drill this out once I get it in the proper location. But for now, I'm just going to kind of put it right here. And I want to get my get the clevis and the threaded stud to use as a, a guide. Let me see here. Okay, so here I'm using this threaded stud, and here's the clevis, and it goes on like this. And what I'm going to do is, they say to put like a little lock nut on here, like a, this is a 256, I think, lock nut. I'm not going to worry about that. This thing can't, it basically can't unscrew because it's connected to the, it's connected to the control horn itself. But I'm going to put a, probably a little dab of um, Loctite on it. But I'll put it like right about like that. And again, I like to put a little bit extra in here, okay? And that gives me a little room to play with so I can back it out or screw it in. So that gives me a little bit of room to play with when I'm making my adjustments, something like that. That, there we go. That's good like that. And now I can kind of mark where I want to cut my control, the control rod. I would say somewhere right around here. I can cut it a little bit on the long side. Now another way to do this is the opposite kind of way I did it was, was would be to attach the control attach it to the control rod itself and don't connect it at the servo yet and then just pull it through and then line it up like that with the kind of just connect it and then pull it through and then mark it like here and that's actually a nice way to do it also but I decided to do it this way this time. So this will be about where I want to cut it. So let me do that. Bingo. And now I have to screw that in there. So what I'm going to do though, it's going to be hard to do with it connected. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it from this side. Give myself a little bit of room to work here. And now I'll screw it into here. Again, it's not going to be super easy to do that. So I can pull it out, and now I can kind of screw it in. Now this is kind of hard to do sometimes. This is actually going in pretty good, I think. Here's a little trick. Let me show you a little trick that I didn't invent. But if you have a variable speed drill like this, this is like kind of a low, this isn't like a super powerful one. I wouldn't recommend doing this with a real powerful drill. But you can kind of put this in here, tighten it down that Make sure I got the right okay kind of hold this yeah, see if I can do this here without making a big problem Oops. okay see that kind of cool got to be careful all right let's put this back in Connect it to my servo again. Okay, there we go. And now I can put the clevis on here. Okay. 
All right, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on, let's put it on the second one from the top. That seems to be the lucky, the lucky uh, setting for me. Like that. So it's gonna have to go in quite a ways here. Now, a little problem that I have, or at least a little something to consider, is that that dowel that connects the two elevator halves together is right in here. So it's going to be a little more difficult to drill through that dowel. Hopefully, I don't really want to. I don't really want to hit the dowel, but I do have to keep this kind of where it needs to be. All right, so I think I'm going to go ahead and now drill this out. And like I mentioned, I'm going to kick it over. I'm going to have to kick it over a little bit, somewhere like right about here. Something like that right there, I think, will work. I'm just going to take my pin vise. Pretty easy to do because I'm dealing with balsa. Pop that through. I've got to be careful I don't push the monocoat. Like that. I don't want to tear my monocoat up on the other side, so I'm just going to go ahead and pop it through with a little needle or a pin that okay and then hopefully I can take the screw all right get the screw I'm going to put it in here okay that'll hold it on there while I screw the next or drill the next one I'll make sure this is kind of lined up nicely This is going to be a little interesting. Hmm. I think that dowel is kind of pushing that over a little bit. I'm not super fond of that, but it is what it is. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that all off of there and I'm going to put some CA in those holes. All right, I'm just going to put a little dab of CA in there just to kind of strengthen that wood up. All right, we'll let that set and then we'll come back and attach it. All right, so now I'm go ready to go ahead and attach the control horn. So for the little back plate that they give you, I like to kind of pre, kind of drill it, not drill it, screw the, the screw into or the, or the bolt into it, sort of thread it first. It makes it a little bit easier when you're kind of pushing this through so for it to accept the bolt. So I just did that. So I kind of just threaded these things just now. Okay, so let me go ahead and try to get this threaded through here. That guy there. Huh. After putting CA on it, sometimes it sort of closes up a bit. You have to be kind of careful. There's that one. Realize you probably can't see this with my fingers in the way but let me grab this in here put it in here quickly yeah a lot of times when you do the CA like this it'll kind of obviously the wood is less forgiving because it gets harder you have to kind of get it lined back up and pushed through the hole sometimes it gets a little obstructed that's good like that Then I'll try to just put it in so that it just barely comes out the other side. I can kind of feel it. Like this. Like that. Okay. Let me go ahead and flip it over. Okay, so there are my 
you see that? So there, there are the little bolts kind of coming through. And I'm going to try to just feel it, put the plate on there, and hopefully I can catch it. All right, so obviously I adjusted my camera angle here, and I did have a little bit of trouble playing with this to get it to kind of line up, because what happened is as I drilled out the two holes, I kind of just skirted the side of the dowel, and what happened is the dowel kicked the screw over. So when the screws came out on this side, or the bolts, whatever you want to call them, came out on this side, they were kind of kicked a little bit closer to each other, and they weren't lining up on the little plate right here. And that's something that kind of happens it can it kind of happens a lot is if you don't drill those holes perfectly straight i found that obviously when you when they pop out on the other side and they're not lined up if they're not in there perfectly sort of perpendicular then they don't line up with the with the, this, this retaining plate on the back here and then you have to mess around with it so that's what i did i kind of had to play with it and i had to drill the hole out a little bit more to get it to sort of fit but now it's kind of attached or it is attached and i can go ahead and screw these guys on here now and then one thing one thing that I found it's good to do is to screw them on kind of alternate go from one side to the other and hopefully draw that plate up against it because what will happen is if you try to do one at a time it can distort the plate the little nylon plate in the back there with my thumb in the way and if you start to distort it, then it starts getting kind of off center and won't go in correctly. So hopefully you can kind of see this. You don't want to over tighten it. You don't want to kind of you don't want to crush the control surface. Something like that. Try it out. All right, so the elevator is now set and we will move on to the rudder control horn. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same exact thing for the rudder, but as I mentioned before, we're gonna to have to make room because of this, the way that the tail section is blunt here, there's not gonna be enough room for the control horn to move. So if it's on here, supposed to be sort of up, up against it just like the other one you want it, the holes lined up along the hinge line and because of the way that the plane is designed it gets in the way of itself you kind of see there so we have to go ahead and cut that slot out of there or cut a groove into it I should say but before I do that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to again cut the control rod to the proximate right length which I think is going to be right about there and I'll mark it give myself about that much room right there okay and I'll cut that off there like that and I'll disconnect it and I will attach this just like I did on the other one okay so just like with the elevator I want to put it it's gonna go right about there and it is in the way so I'm gonna mark with my pen here I'm just gonna kind of mark what I got to cut out here About there. It's going to be hard to kind of get behind here with this pin. 
All right, something like that. Okay, so there's my marks, and now I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to do this. I think I may try to just go ahead and saw it out of here with my, um, with my kind of fine tooth saw. Let me see what I can do here. Okay, so I've been thinking about this, and if this is going to be here, up against, kind of be slotted in here, I'm really gonna have to make a pretty big groove in here. Now I know, just kind of on my based on my experience, I know that I'm not gonna hook it up on the lower hole, and I'm probably not gonna hook it up on the second hole either. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just go ahead and take this portion of the control horn out of here to give myself a little bit more, kind of just make this a little bit smaller of a slot. And I think that'll be okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with something like this. I'm going to cut this, kind of trim this a little bit. I don't think that's going to compromise anything. I'll try to look and see what this looks like. All right, that's better. Okay. Yeah, this is kind of funky, but it's the way it is. Okay, that'll be a little more helpful, I think. But I'm still going to have to cut a pretty substantial chunk out of the tail section here. Okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead and try this with my little razor saw here. We'll see how it goes. I also want to make the slot big enough that I can monaco inside of it. All right, well, that's kind of not fun. Okay, so that was pretty ugly. I didn't like doing that. Um, there's actually a little, I probably cut too much out kind of in here, but I'm not sure. I may have to put a little bit of bend in here anyhow to kind of still get it to kind of move smoothly. But if I line up the, the control horn with the holes kind of right on the, sort of like right on the axis or the hinge line, it puts it like right about there and then kind of hard but if I can close it or kind of bring it over I think I've I think I've got it close I may have to take a little bit more out of it there's only an inch of throw that's supposed to be on the on the rudder so I'm not too concerned about it. I think I, I think I'm pretty good so I'll probably take a little more out of here and then I'll sand this out and then I'm gonna go ahead and monocoat it and kind of finish it off and hopefully that'll work I I think that's sort of a weird a weird feature of this build. It's probably the only thing that I've found so far in this build that I'm not 
really fond about. Um, but yeah, so we'll go ahead and just kind of leave it like this. Seems like this will work okay. Okay, so let me go ahead and clean this up and then we'll move on. Okay, so the elevator and the rudder are now finished, and I'll have to do some final, you know, dial it in a little bit later, but I got sort of them on their rough settings right now. And I was hoping I can get to my ailerons in this video, but I kind of sort of ran out of time. So I'll do that in the next video um, in, this, in this series. So thanks for watching my channel. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.